Oh, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. For the Holy One of Israel and this opportunity to have few words in His name to reflect upon the great awakening that is taking place in the universe, the awakening to the ultimate reality, the singular divinity, the source of the house of Israel as the priests, kings, prophets of the world in this new dispensation. And those of us who are in the diaspora, knowing not our language, knowing not our God, have encountered this great power, the Yud, the K, the Vav K, without pronouncing that name. And that intelligence, it's an intelligence that comes to transform the mind. And these words come to, come to the mind as we encounter that intelligence. Anoki Adonai Eloheka Eshe Hoseeti Etikam Miretz Mitzrayim Lihiyot Lakim Elohim Ani Adonai Eloheka Mimet That is Ani Adonai Eloheka I am the Lord your God Ani Adonai Eloheka Met, it is true. Ani Adonai Elohega Ashi Hosi Eti Etikam, who has removed you Etikam Miretz Mitzrayim from the house of slavery, from the house of Egypt, metaphorically, slavery. Hmm? Lihiyot, to be Lachim, Elohim, to be your God. Ani Adonai Elohekam, he met. I am the God, your God, it is true. So in this encounter that we who have been resurrected from the dead, this intelligence that we encounter that speaks these words to us in the Lashon HaKodesh language, of Ivrit and gives us a mandate to learn that language and to study that language and to be transformed by language and to recognize that as these words become manifest in our lives because Ivrit is the language of creation. So as we begin to speak these words and other these words in the form of worship the neurophysiological pre pre predisposition of worship that is having a posture of devotion and dedication, dependence, and surrender. This creates in the neurophysiology this reverence posture perpetually. One dwells in the sanctuary now of Hashem knowing these words. Ani Adonai Eloheka. I am the Lord your God. Huh? We didn't have a God. We were enslaved by people who had a God and they gave us their God and we called upon their God. But now in this time, the divine intelligence that is the generator and the organizer and dispenser has come within our own awakening, subjective awareness, myself, I-ness, to encounter this intelligence that identifies itself as my God and the one God of the universe, the singular source. And my knowing this now makes me his son, to know the great mystery of life, to know the God, to know what that means, and to have encountered that intelligence that says, Anuki Adonai Eloheka, I am the Lord your God. And via Hafta Ed Adonai Eloheka, Bakal Lavaveka, Bakal Nefsheka, Bakal Muadeka. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul all of your resources. This makes you 
my son. This makes you a member of the people who also, like you, have been awakened to this singular truth. This one, and it's found in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Shema Yisrael. Hashem Eloheinu. Hashem Echad. See? That one now comes to you, say, and that one comes to us and has that personal encounter. <coughs> Ani. But in the, Anoki, first, the question, Anoki, two forms of the I, Anoki, I am to be, because God can't make you be in submission to him. You have a free mortal agent, and you can have your choice. But once that choice is made, yes, I surrender, you are my God, speaks again. Anoki, Adonai. Huh? Ani, Elohim. Ani, I am. Ani, Adonai, Eloheka. I am the Lord your God. So this is just a few words of contemplation, something worthy to contemplate. Is the God of Israel your God? And how is this worship, your personal worship? Because it has been my experience in this time that Hashem himself, as he says, I think in Yeskel, Ezekiel, I think it's 34, that I myself am going to find my lost sheep because you shepherds of Israel have been very remiss and racist and you've not given any attention to the lost sheep, although you knew that there were some lost sheep. And that's not to impugn all of you because I've met many rabbis who are interested in finding the lost sheep. So there's diversity among us, not uniformity, but there's diversity, and that diversity is inherent in creation but it's evolutionary toward a goal. And this time is the unity of diversity so that we all can recognize and say yes to Hashem's invitation to us in Shemot. you find it in chapter 20. I know key, I deny Eloheka. Now that the complication of the I being sort of like, hey, here's an invitation for you. And then once that invitation comes, yes, then he can speak again. Ani Adonai Eloheka. Beautiful, beautiful words. Beautiful words, we find them. Ani Adonai Eloheka. Asher Hoseyeti Etikam. Miretz Mitzrayim Lihiyot Lachim. Elohim. Ani Adonai Eloheka Mimet. I am Hashem. Ani Adonai. Ani Hashem. Ani, if you want to pronounce that word, we don't pronounce that word, some of you do. Ani, Adonai, Eloheka, your God. Asher, 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 Hoseyeti, Hoseyeti, who has removed you, Hoseyeti, Eti, come, Mi Eretz, Mitzrayim, who has removed you from the land of Egypt, Lihiyot, Lachim, to be to you, Elohim. Ani Adonai Elohekam, he met, I am the Lord your God, it is true. These beautiful words we find in the Torah, these beautiful words we say, these words when spoken creates that reality as we surrender to that reality, yes, you are my God, yes, you are the God, the one true God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob the God of Sarah, the God of Rachel and Leah and Revka and my mother and your mother and your grandfather and grandmothers who told us that this day would surely come. I heard a Jewish man who was bitterly, uh, bitterly expressing his views about the 
black Americans who dare to say all of a sudden that they are Israelites. How could this be? This is absurd. This doesn't make sense. That was his posture. He was looking at it purely intellectually, and I thought, now how could an Israelite, a real Yehudi from the house of Israel, who saw and know and has been the recipient of a tradition of very highly unlikely events called miracles. For example, parting the Red Sea or the Ten Plagues. Now, he can concede himself as a Jewish man that he would believe this, but to see the awakening of a nation by Hashem, but of course it's in the, in the prophets, in Yeheskel, that Hashem says, it's very clear, you priests, you who've had the fat, you haven't done anything for this disenfranchised population in the belly of the North American beast. And so Hashem says, I myself will come. Well, Hashem is pure consciousness. Not a man, not an anthropomorphic character walking. No man is God. But some men have been fully realized and become God conscious. That's the ultimate quest. To be unified, that's the goal of worship. What is the goal of worship? The goal of worship is that the worshiper and the object of worship, subject of worship, one worship will become unified, become one. And what we can say, not my will, but thine one. Thy will be done because now my individuality has been completed and I am subsumed in the universal consciousness of the G.O.D., the generator, the organizer, the dispenser, the yud, the hay, the vow, the hay, that divine intelligence. So it's an opportunity in this season of awakening so that we say yes to that divine consciousness because the coming is come, ming, as we speak, continuing to come. The coming has come and is coming. And what is the coming? The coming is an influx of consciousness, pure divine consciousness of the G-O-D that says, Anoki, Ani, Adonai Eloheka. Give you that invitation to say, yes, you're my God. I was looking for my God because I've been praying to this God over here and we don't ever have any answer to liberation and freedom and abundant life as indicated in the sacred scriptures. So I know that something significant was missing. Now you have come. Yes, I have come. Ani Adonai Eloheka. I am your God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all of the prophets, the gods of those who have been anointed and those who have been anointed are called Messiah. Mashiach. To be anointed for the initiation into the service of God, the work of God is to be Mashiach, and there have been many Mashiach, the Messiah, anointed for the purpose of awakening. And that's a mystery that the intellect simply cannot grasp, so you can have all type of camps and postures. That's why the young Jewish man said, this doesn't make sense. And I laughed, I agreed with him, yes, you're right, but isn't that the point of the Torah? It doesn't make sense because it's not rational, it's spiritual, it's transcendental, it's, it's the hand of God, you know, telling Abraham to kill, J, uh, kill his son, Yitzhak, and then at the very moment, stopping him and saying, there's a ram tied in the bush prepared for you, I'm testing you. That's a miracle, a very highly unlikely event. God tells you to kill your son, test you. Well, it's just as likely that he himself would come with this inpouring of consciousness to wake up people and say, you know, you are my son. And he will tell you in uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, who is my son, Israel. Israel is my firstborn son, and I have come now in this dispensation to wake him up from the dead, to take him out of the niggerdom, 
to divest himself of negritude and Christianity, which has been the change that shackled the mind to the worship of the tradition of those who enslaved them. And now that season is over and we are awakening to the one true God. The God of Yahshua. They were made to make Yahshua the God, but Yahshua's very name testifies to the fact that he is not God because his name, Shua, means Savior. God is Savior. Yah is Savior. Yah is welfare. Yah is deliver. Not some egocentric, I'm Savior. I'm welfare. I'm deliver. No, every Ivrit. And we find it even in Mark. And I was reading the Christian Bible looking and studying, see what their perspective, and I saw Yahshua said something in Mark 12, 29, that was just so beautiful that any conscientious Yehudi would say, they ask him, what is the first commandment? And he being a good Yehudi, having been taught by his parents, and having been initiated properly into the field of study, Torah, he quoted Deuteronomy 6 4. He said, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, one, one God, not me, not I'm God. He said, like every Yehudi knows, Ata Echad, Ushimo Echad, you're one, your name is Ata Kadosh, Fishimek Kadosh, Toshim Beko, Yom Yihali Lukasila, you're holy, your name is holy, holy ones praise your name every day. And that's what Yeshua said. That's what Yahshua is saying now. I'm here saying the same thing I said before. <laughs> Shema Yisrael, Hashem Eloheinu, Hashem Echad. And if you have to eat, it's not the hook of a call of the hook of a call of the hook of a call of the hook of Love him with all your heart. And when you do that, your heart is transformed. Then you begin to see yourself in others. Begin to see that one intelligence expressed not only in you, but in it becomes ubiquitous, omnipresent, everywhere. And that's the spiritual quest of mankind. From that perspective, we can love our neighbor as ourself because our neighbor is ourself. And this is the great awakening that's taking place, and we're so fortunate to have been the recipients of this grace to go to the Holy Land many times and meet many, many people, Jews, Gentiles who are being awakened, Ethiopians, Assyrians, all type of people, people from Greece, oh, people from Rhodesia. I met a group of Africans at the, at the wall, the Wailing Wall, or the western wall of the temple. And it was such a miraculous experience in Rosh Hashanah. So beautiful, so beautiful. You see the international flavor of the Yehudim. And to see the role that everybody has played and is playing, and we know that everything is Hashem. And so from that vantage point, we don't have too much of emotional reaction about anything other than we just Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, bless his holy name, for he is holy and he has created a universe and he has given us access to the tools that he used to create that universe or that were used to create that is different combinations and permutations of the Aleph Bet. The letters and the divine letters are so beautiful because the Torah is a book of letters. And when we engage these letters from the understanding and from our gift, because they, first of all, the, the Torah is itself the transcendental immortal one. That is being, pure being, pure divine intelligence. Each letter is an impulse of that intelligence. This is why we say that intelligence in different combinations and permutations would create everything in our physiology is an expression of that. And that's why when we 
utter these words, we have a neurophysiological response having to do with the resonance frequency of the letters and our physiological constituents, what they are made of in our response to this divine energy ends up giving us a, a revivification of our physiology, a expansion of our mind's potential so that we become the living expression of Hashem in time and space in terms of the full potential in which he wished mankind and humanity to live in synchrony with him always in the sanctuary of Hashem with the spectacles of Hashem so that wherever we see and whatever we see, we see Hashem. And from that perspective, it becomes uh, Ani Adonai Eloheka. I am the Lord your God, and yes, 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 King, yes, you are my God. I surrender. I worship you. I give myself to you. I worship you. Hmm? I am devoted to you. I am dedicated to you, hmm? and I am depending on you. No longer am I dependent upon mankind to give me my daily bread. For I have been instructed that you will give me my daily bread if I have the imuna, that is the faith, to trust and let go. Because the workforce is there to work, 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 work you down where you came to this period, this plane of existence to rise up higher by connecting to the means of evolution. That is that synchronous momentum of spiritual power that's rising these forces and you rise with that into your cosmic status and your all-time purpose and cosmic status is the worship of the ultimate reality. Hashem, the name. So may we grow in fullness, may we grow in the recognition that reality is one. Hashem is that one divine intelligence and each one of us is an individualized impulse of that having an odyssey of tikkun olam a tikkun, personal tikkun tikkun, our own correction and our own correction we will help correct the world because the Ultimate society is a collection of individual units. And when each individual unit is enlightened, then even the whole thing becomes enlightened. And that is what's taking place now as the consciousness of Hashem's dance. And we become aware of the ultimate reality in ourselves and our brothers. And all of this name calling and bickering, it's at the sophomore level. It's pretty. It's pretty comical when you know Hashem. It's the, it's the antithesis of the indice that Hashem is present. Hashem arguing with himself, saying, I'm this, no, you that, I'm calling you that, and your name is that, and I'm this name. And all names are just relative vibrations that the ultimate rides upon to have an evolutionary odyssey in time and space unique, but everything in time and space is Hashem. And that's from the perspective of the wise man. Even the darkness is Hashem. And you are here not to do anything but to grow and recognize why the darkness has been used for its purpose relative to your own personal evolution. Why did you encounter the darkness? Because it wasn't a mistake. There are no mistakes here in this terrestrial plane of existence, we come here for correction, and that correction entails the interaction of opposites. So evolution occurs through the interaction of opposites. So from a, from a freshman perspective, it's argument, you, I, thou, you and me, dichotomy. But with maturity and ascension, we recognize, oh, oh okay, you have a sense of humor, Hashem. This is the grand play of the universe. This is what it means, huh? All of the diversity is you. And everything is for a lesson pertaining to my growth and development. 
beautiful ascension to wisdom. And this is what we say to the children, the young minds, the young souls, that this is our objective to grow. And wherever you are, so where you're supposed to be. That's the momentum you have accrued until this present moment. This is just information on the card of time designated by a poet, a prophet, a pointer. Says, you know, go that way. Beautiful stream. So may Hashem bless you and may you say yes. Or Anoki Adonai Eloheka, yes. Yeah, you can say Ani Adonai Eloheka, I am your God. Huh? who has taken you huh? from the house huh? of slavery, from the house of idolatry, from the house of immorality, from the house of money lust, from the house of athletics, <laughs> and bringing you now into another strata, climbing Jacob's ladder up to your rightful place as priests, prophets, and kings. Baruch Hashem.